Hey guys, and welcome to episode 28 of Serganan's Feed the Beast Season 3 Let's Play. I'm down here letting this redstone energy cell charge up, and it's it's almost done. That's the second one. Um, I went ahead and charged up the, the first one already. And looks like I'm doing pretty good on the lava. Now, I was having problems when it first started up. Uh, I wasn't generating enough. So I added another volcanic furnace. Also, back here, uh, I went and put another igneous extruder uh, going into that chest just because one of them was not enough to provide enough cobblestone. So we have that set up. And one of the things that's happening, though, is if we look in here, See how it's constantly filling up with cobblestone? It's it's basically staying at 64. If I pull out a stack, it will very quickly refill back up. And I'll, I'll give it just a second. You can see here, it, it's starting to go up pretty quickly. Yeah, there it goes. So if we do the same thing up here, see how this one's slowly going down? And the reason for that is because the way that the item ducts work is they put items in the closest available inventory. Well, the chest is way down there, so this one is the closest. So up here, this one has to wait until this one's completely full. And sometimes this doesn't have any cobblestone for a while. Well, there's a way that we can take care of that. We still want to use the item ducts. Because, you know, I have them, I like them, they work well. So, what we can do is make them a little bit faster. So instead of having just regular item ducks, we can make these super fast item ducks. So that way, it'll uh, put, you know, the cobblestone into the, this volcanic furnace a lot faster, and then find its way into this one a lot faster. So let's see how many we need. We're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like we're going to need six of them. So what I can do to make these faster is I can take my item ducts, and if we go upstairs here, I can take a little bit of glowstone. And we can basically fill these item ducts with glowstone. And to do that, we have to obviously melt down glowstone. Now, it's two glowstone per item duct. Oh, maybe it's one per item duct. Yeah, it's one per item duct. So I need four more. And what this gives us is the impulse item duct. Now, these are really, really fast. You don't have to use uh, impulse item ducts if you don't want to, but, you know, I want this to, uh, to push items in as fast as it can, because I want to make sure that we don't run out of cobble. So, let's get back here, and... Go ahead and pick this up here, and that'll get us our servo back. And I'm just going to pop these off. Go down our impulse item ducts, and we need to go here. Now, one thing to note, not all of them have to be impulse, but in this case it's only six of them, so I'm going to go ahead and make them all impulse item ducts. And switch this, and just like regular, we have to install our servo. And before I turn that on, I want to change these. So impulse there. And I don't want it to connect to the bottom. I kind of need to get up on top. And take this one away and put our last impulse. So now, if we go ahead and turn this on by just telling it to ignore redstone signal, you can see there, see how much faster items are moving? 
much faster. So we might want to change up all of our other ones, uh, you know, around our base. It's not something we have to do, but in the future when we have a lot more glowstone, it might be something that we want to do. So there we go. Looks nice. And if we go here, now if we pull out a stack, you can see here it's constantly staying at 64 with maybe a second or two before it goes back up. So this one, uh, same thing. It should stay at 64. Let's look how our lava is doing. Yeah, our lava is doing pretty good. So that'll just make sure that we don't have any problems when we do go to expand and add on another line of uh, magma, magmatic dynamos. Because eventually, I probably will. I'll probably duplicate the same setup with the 15 right above it. And there's room for, you know, all 15 right there. So now we have all of that set up. And I didn't want to take that... Uh, I didn't want to run my my redstone energy conduit off camera. I decided to go ahead and, and wait until this episode to run it. So, I really need it for my ME system. So let's go ahead and, and dismantle everything but, you know, that running right there to our ME system. We don't need to use, uh, we don't need, to, I'm going to leave this right here. But we don't need to worry about all of this stuff. And, wow, that's a lot of energy. And what I want to do is come in right down here. And I want to... You know what, I could always just move this over one. Yeah, I'll probably just go right straight down from here. So we just have to find right where our cabling is uh, be right here okay and then we can hook this up right here I'm gonna tell this side to be an output and hopefully we can do this without getting stuck And one more. So then what I can do now is I can take my controller and just plop it down right here. And we just change this to the redstone flux. Ah, I guess it would be build craft since it's converting. Perfect. And we don't have to worry about that setup because we know we have lots of lava down here. Yeah, it's not even using that much. And I'm just going to go ahead and cover this back up. And I will get a cover for right there. So now we have our ME system running off of the redstone flux. So what we can do is we can get rid of this here. So I want to go ahead and break all of this and that way it goes, it goes ahead and stops. Now I'm going to leave it run out of power itself. Right now it's still generating power. So I kind of want to let it generate as much as it can. So I'm going to tell it to just inline. So that way all of that power goes straight back into this industrial coil. It's going to take just a minute for it to stop. But what we can do is clean up the rest of this stuff. And just like I had said before with this uh, magnetos magnetostatic engine, that's a mouthful. What I can do now is I can take this one here yeah, I'll just put it right right here. And that way this goes straight up to our extractor. And really easy 
I can just take and put an energy conduit right here. And you know what? I can go ahead and just cover this up. I don't think I need that there. Did I get it? Yeah. So we can go ahead and close this off too. And then once I get rid of these, then I'll go ahead and just close up this wall, this little area. Now what we can do is we can look in our Rotary Craft Handbook and find out exactly what power needs we, we need for our extractor. So if we look in here, and there's the extractor. So we're going to need 512 torque and 8192 rads. So what we can do here is I just need to get it started before it'll show me. I want to get this up to 8192. I don't know, can I get that high? There we go, 8192. And I need 512 for the torque. One twenty eight, two fifty six, five twelve. Now, hopefully, that doesn't drain my my power too much, but that should be just what I need to keep my extractor going. Let me see how this power is doing. All right, stay in it, stay in pretty constant. How about these? Well, so far, looks like. Well, these are empty down here, but I wonder if that was from filling up the, the cell. Eh, they're filled back up. If we notice that we start to dip in power, then we might have to change things up or add more magnetics. But, looks like this is holding steady pretty well. That's, that's still going. So one of the problems that I was having was I didn't have enough power. Turn that off. I didn't have enough power here to run this. You can you can see just from this one uh, magnetostatic engine that it needs four megawatts, a little over four, just to run the extractor. Well, I wasn't producing anywhere near four. So now with converting it all to redstone flux, and then from there, using these magnetostatic engines, I can tell it this is exactly the power needs that it needs. It's not too much, it's not too little. I'm not wasting any anywhere. It's exactly what it needs for this to run. And you can see that there was a little bit of a backup of ores that weren't getting processed. So the nice thing is, is now, we're, we're kind of converting our whole system so that our whole base is basically going to run off of redstone flux, which is a lot easier to generate. And then I can convert that redstone flux into rotary craft power where it's needed. Now things like our fermenter, which still only require one kilowatt, a DC electric engine will still work just fine. So now what we need to do is we need to worry about getting the power over here to these machines. So I kind of want to go back behind the wall here. Hmm. Let's see about going through. Actually, you know what? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through this wall right here. And if I just go right here, now remember I can put covers on this here. And we should be able to come out. 
I can always move this one. We should be able to come out right here. Um, yeah, that'll work. Actually, I probably don't even need to, to take those away. Let's go right here. And just put these back. And then, like I said, I can always put covers here. And that should work right there. Now, I do want to put the redstone energy cell here. Because, remember, the, the hardened energy cell only outputs so much. So, what we'll probably do is we'll probably use the hardened energy cell for maybe mobile mobile power. Or, you know, if we're going to be carrying it anywhere. And then what I can do from here is put my redstone energy cell. And this will make sure that my machines stay nice and powered up. And we'll just put it right here. And I'm going to tell this that the back is your input. And this side is output right here. And then I just need to convert these to redstone energy conduit. So I'm going to go ahead and I have to get behind the wall to change them all. So I'm going to change all of these up and I'll be right back. So now I have this nice and cleaned up. I actually had it go through the wall here and then when it goes up there. You know what? Hmm. Actually looking at this now, I think the way that I want it is I'm going to have it go through the wall right here. And what I can do is just go straight up this way and put this cover right here. Let me grab a couple of uh, regular covers. Yeah, that looks a lot better. It's nice and cleaned up. Um, I don't mind the cabling, you know, a little bit, but for the most part, it's it's nice and hidden. Now, I also removed my export buses here. And I kept them configured because they had all the flakes that I get from Rotary Craft. And what I'd like to do is... Uh, one of my other videos had a suggestion to go ahead and put an interface right here and that's actually a really good idea so what I'm going to do is go ahead and make an ME interface and what are we missing some fluix dust looks like I'm gonna have to grind up some nether quartz so for that, we're going to have to come upstairs here. Go ahead and throw this right here in the pulverizer, and I actually want to turn it back to this way. So that way it goes into the chest here. And I don't need a lot of it right now. So let's see if we can make the interface now. So we just need a little bit of Fluix dust. and put it all together. So there's our ME interface. Now, you guys have seen me use this in the past. I used it for both of my farms. And so I'm just going to put this... Actually, what, I'm like, what I'd like to do is pick this up. I don't need these here. And I don't really want this one here either. Let me just pick up this one as well. So that's nice and cleaned up. 
And we still need this to connect, so... Let's see if we can get down here. And we'll just put a little bit of cabling right here. So it just runs this direction. Yeah, that should work. And you know what? We don't even need this right here. It would be a lot easier to actually run it back from the back here. And because I'm doing it this way, I want to put my N my uh, furnaces over one. And so what I can do is my export. I'll be back in one minute. Okay, so as I was saying, what I want to do is put my export bus right here. And this one has is all filled up with all different types of flakes that I'm going to get from Rotary Craft. And then what I can do is put down one of my redstone furnaces right on top. And I'm going to set, go ahead and clear this and set the bottom to be input. And then I'm going to set the output to be this side here. And what we can do is grab a little bit of cabling and throw it right here so that way we have power. And I can actually get rid of this one. And then here I'm going to put one piece of cabling the ME cable, and right here I'm going to put one piece of, no, right here I'm going to do the other export. And that one's pre-configured too, so we just need to turn it around so that way it faces up. Up. There we go. And we actually can get rid of that one. And right here, I'm going to put my interface and my other furnace. And then if we squeeze back here, we should be able to put that one there. And actually get rid of this one here. So it's a little bit of reworking. There we go. So now, any flakes should go in here, and let's do input from there, output to the right. So they should automatically get put into the ME furnace, or the ME interface. And so that kind of cleans this up a little bit. It gets rid of um, the import buses so we can use them elsewhere, and makes the, the room look a little bit cleaner because now we can just cover this all up here. And there we go. We just have our two furnaces, and if we need, we can add more export buses if I find that, you know, I have more flakes. Or what we could do is potentially maybe put another interface in another furnace. It's always easy to do uh, to add on a little bit more. So it looks like this has finished, um, at least generating power. So let's clean this up completely here. We no longer need any of this stuff, because we now have our magnetostatic engine running, uh, running our extractor. And I keep getting these Rotary Craft handbooks every time I log in. I think it's every time the servers reset. So let's clean this up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and throw one in the system. When I get a whole bunch of them, I'll just get rid of them. So now what we can do is close this off, and we don't have to worry about that. One other thing that I'd like to do is... See, right here, we looks like we're running out of lava. And I'm wondering if it's because we're not generating it fast enough. Hmm. 
See, even this one still is not filling up very fast. You know what? We might need... Let's see how our chest is doing back there. We might need another um, igneous extruder. Yeah, see, we have no cobblestone here. That is not good. And I already have one right there, one right here, and one right here. You know, I could always make this a double chest and then move one. Yeah, let's let's do that. Because we don't want to run out of lava. So let's make another igneous extruder. And they're pretty easy to make. And I'm just going to grab three machine frames just in case. Three of those. You know what? Let's just go ahead and make a whole bunch. We'll just make three igneous extruders. So now I have three extra igneous extruders. I should have a couple of buckets. And I already have three filled with lava. That's perfect. So I'm just going to need a little bit of water. And save that. I don't need the redstone. Don't need those just yet. And I should have some more buckets in here. Now I am going to need one more bucket of lava. Let me just sleep through the night here real quick. And I can actually grab that extra bucket of lava right outside here. Go ahead and fill these up with water. And I can always create an infinite source of water downstairs. Now I do have an igneous extruder set up right here that's connecting to that lava pipe. And it's just making obsidian. Basically, it'll make one stack and stop. So I will always have one stack of obsidian. So, oh, you know what? I forgot a chest. Let me just make one chest. Oh, we already have a chest. Perfect. And then what I can do is I can pick up this igneous extruder here. And we'll go ahead and go right into the wall here. We're going to have to clear a little bit of space just so we can maneuver around. And I want to put this right here to make this a double chest. It'll still pull out just fine. And put one igneous extruder here and set that up to output into the chest. Go ahead and throw one bucket of lava, one bucket of water, and that should start filling there. I can put one of the igneous extruders right here and do one bucket of water, one bucket of lava, and have this one output to here as well. And just to make sure that I don't have any problems, I'm going to set up one last one. One. No! No, 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 no! Oh, that's not good. Okay, well, at least keep inventories turned on. Let's see if we can clean this up. Okay, now we can put lava and water. And we're telling this one to go ahead and output down. So we can't open up the chest, but that should quickly fill up everything with cobblestone. So now we should not have any more problems with our cobblestone generation. 
And I'm going to go ahead and get everything together. There's one last thing I just need to check on the time here real quick. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Looks like we are at that wrapping up point. And I found out what was draining all of my power. It was this magnetostatic engine right here. It, just running my extractor was draining all of my power and all of my lava. So I think uh, between this episode and next, I'm going to think up, uh, go over a couple of, of ideas on how we can potentially maybe store some extra lava so that way we don't run out because these tanks are not very big. Um, we can also think about maybe expanding this if we have the lava generation. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and with that, I will see you guys later.